All right, here's a lecture on conic sections in polar coordinates for our final topic in this pre-calculus class. So what are conic sections in polar coordinates? Well, we're gonna use polar coordinates, but before we get into that, let's talk about a quantity called eccentricity. Uh, what it is, is it's a ratio of distances that defined a conic in polar form. Um, and we use the notation E and caution, don't confuse this with E, the natural um, constant that's about 2.7-ish uh, that's related to the natural logarithm. This is not the same E as that. So the, what it is is the ratio of any point on your conic, the distance from that point to the focus here, uh, over divided by the distance from that point to the directrix. In the case of a parabola, that's always going to be, um, those will be equal. And we'll see that in a minute. So. Uh, so so what does that quantity eccentricity, that ratio of distances, uh, have to tell us about other types of conics? Well, first and foremost is we haven't presented this yet, but uh, hyperbolas and ellipses also have a directrix. It's just very, very hard to find using x, y standard coordinates. So we wait to introduce the concept until we're ready to use polar coordinates, in which, came, in which case the game, uh, the game gets, it's not easy, but easier. Okay, so if that E quantity is, uh, it's always going to be positive. First, first and foremost, E is always positive. Um, so if it's between zero and one, we have an ellipse. Uh, if it is equal to exactly one, since back to that prior slide, you can see the definition of parabola is the, the, the points on the, the parabola itself are equidistance from the focus to the directrix. That's always measuring the directest, most direct route to the directrix, a right angle. Um, so we know that ratio should be one. And then if E is greater than one, we will have a hyperbola. So there's a GeoGebra applet, which I have open in another tab, though, which we'll take a quick look at here, which sort of illustrates how changing E gives us a different conic. So if it's bigger than one, we have a hyperbola. And as I'm dragging this E in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that it has an effect on the shape. But then what happens when we get to one exactly? Okay, well, that, that, para, that hyperbola is kind of disappearing. So let's move our screen. All right, so hey, wait a second. All right, when it's one exactly, the left-hand side of our hyperbola stays in the form of a parabola, but the right hand is gone. And if we, if we move the screen, we can see that it is completely gone and all we're left with is a parabola. Now, if E, the eccentricity, is less than one, you can see that that parabola changes into a, um, changes from a parabola into an ellipse all the way down to, uh, if you have an eccentricity of zero, you don't have any conic at all. It's gotta be greater than zero and less than one strictly. That link is in both the slides and in the reading assignment and resources on the course site. So feel free to explore what changing those other quantities, uh, what effect those have on our conics as well. All right, so now let's get into the general, the general uh, format of conics in polar form. And some texts use P for the directrix instead of D. I'm gonna stick with D as is shown here. So just be aware of that. If you have a vertical directrix, your equation of the vertical line will be x equals some number. It'll be plus or minus d. And you can determine whether it's plus or minus by looking at the sign down here. All conics in polar form are going to be equal to, of this format, r is equal to eccentricity times this d quantity over 1 plus or minus e times either sine or cosine. The uh, cosine is what tells us we have a vertical directrix. So let's highlight that. The fact that we have cosine here tells us we have a vertical directrix. The fact that we have sine here tells us we have a horizontal directrix. And the sign in front of that E cosine of theta expression tells us whether or not our uh, directrix is going to be a negative constant or positive constant. In the case that you have a negative there, if you have a negative instead of the positive, your directrix is going to be x is equal to negative d. And if you have positive, your directrix is going to be x is equal to positive d. Similar down here, if you have a horizontal directrix, the negative sign tells you that y will be equal to negative d, and the positive in front of e sine of theta tells you that your directrix will be equal to y is equal to d. So that's that's the introduction of what we're doing. Primarily, the uh, type of questions I'm going to ask you are to have a look at, be given something that looks like this and convert it into this format. 
and then identify the quantities from there. So let's just look at a series of examples here. And each of these examples has three slides if you're following along using the slides. So first things first, I'm noticing that this has sine of theta and sine of theta tells me that we have a horizontal directrix. Um, now, the positive sign tells me that since it's horizontal line, horizontal lines are y is equal to, and positive tells me that I'm going to have a positive d is going to be the equation of my directrix. So what are we trying to do with this expression? Well, we want to put it in the format on that prior slide. So we want it to be e times d over 1 plus e times sine of theta. OK, so what's the problem here? What well, kind of the problem child is this 3 over here? that number in the lower left. In standard form, that number should always be a one. So our goal is this, r is equal to e times d plus, I'm sorry, over one plus e times sine of theta. And that seems uh, fairly reasonable. And so what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make this happen? Well, the method uh, to do this is to multiply by uh, a fraction that equals one, sort of a clever version of one, to such that, to in other words, to get one in uh, the quote lower left. I know that's in, informal, but I mean lower left. It's we want to change that three into a one. So what we're going to do. There's our goal. We understand what we want to do. And to do that, we're going to take and we want to first make the 3 into a 1 uh, by multiplying by 1 third uh, ish. What I mean by that is 1 third ish. It's not actually multiplying by 1 third, but rather we're going to multiply by 1. And how do you write one as one third? And an expression that involves one third, one third over one third. We can take up any fraction, the right-hand side of this expression, r is equal to six over three plus two sine of theta, and multiply it by one without changing the overall value. So let's do that. r is equal to one third over one third times uh, six uh, over three plus two sine of theta. Okay, and so now we, we know that multiplying fractions here, you multiply the tops. So we're going to have one third times six over one third times three. We're going to distribute that bottom across both expression, both terms of our expression. One third times two sine of theta. All right, I'm out of horizontal of vertical room, so I'll continue over here. Tidying that up, we get r is equal to two. One third times six is two plus over one plus. One third times two is two thirds sine of theta. Now this is in the format we want it to be. And so what can I identify from here? Well, I can identify the eccentricity. This tells us that E is equal to two thirds. And remember E is always a positive quantity, even if we had a minus in front of there. Uh, so that's half of the battle. So, so far we know the, uh, the highlighted E above, but in order to find the equation of the directrix, we need to know what this d quantity is. So how do we find d from what we know? Well, I'm out of room on this slide, so I'm going to continue on the other, on the next slide. So, uh, but, but before I go over there, the question we're asking is, what is d? All right, goal, r is equal to e times d over one plus e times sine of theta. That's our goal. What we have is we have r is equal to two over one plus two thirds sine of theta. Just rewriting what we had on the prior slide so we have a place to pick up from. All right, so what we're gonna do is we wanna find d. And to do that, I'm gonna do what I call kind of like a, a mini problem, a mini problem to solve. Sorry, let's, I have a hard time writing on this screen. Okay, so what we want, uh, we want to find D 
we need our top to be in the form of e times d. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 2, uh, the, the top of our fraction, and we're going to set it equal to e times d, what we want it to be. But we know something. We know that e is equal to 2 thirds by just identifying it directly from the uh, putting in, in the standard form of a conic and polar formula. And so we say, OK, well, if e is equal to 2 thirds, then I could substitute that in. Oops, sorry, let's get the pen back. 2 is equal to 2 thirds times d, replacing e with that 2 thirds. Now this becomes a game of solving for d. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take in here and we're going to multiply 2 thirds. I'm going to squeeze multiplying by 3 halves in there, and that way everything reduces away, and I'm left with just d. Golden rule of math, if you do it to one side, you better do it to the other. So we'll multiply the left side of the equation by 3 over 2 as well, and be left with 3 is equal to d. Now, I like to, uh, for my final move, kind of rewrite everything using d and e. So I'll do that on this slide. Rewrite using, quote, e, eccentricity, and d. We want it to look like r is equal to ed over 1 plus e times sine of theta. And so to make it look like that, we know that e is equal to 2 thirds, and we just solved that d is equal to 3. And so we'll write it like this. r is equal to e would be 2 thirds, d would be 3 over 1 plus e is 2 thirds sine of theta. All right. From here, what do we know? Well, the eccentricity, e is equal to 2 thirds, is less than 1 means that we should have an ellipse. And you can see the graph off to the right. That confirms that. And from our first slide, since this is a sign, we know we have a horizontal directrix. And the positive tells us that our directrix is going to be the positive quantity d. And so the directrix y is equal to positive d. Well, substituting in what we know d to be, we get y is equal to 3. And you can see that on that graph as well. There's 1, there's 2, and 3. While I have it in the polar grid, you can see that it corresponds to the x, y uh, tick marks in the correct direction and spacing as well. That's the whole game. That is all that I want to focus on for this concept. And that's all that I'm ask, going to ask you to do on your homeworks as well. So there are two more examples. So let's turn these out. All right, so what can we conclude just by looking at this? Well, we have cosine of theta, and it's positive. So these things tell us that we have a vertical directrix. And uh, since it's positive, we know that vertical lines are x equals, and it's going to be x equals positive d. So our goal here is to put this in the form r is equal to e d over 1 plus e cosine of theta. All right, to make that happen, uh, the first thing we want, our first kind of uh, goal here, is we want 4 to be uh, change into 1, that, that 4 in the lower left here. Uh, so let's highlight that to kind of emphasize what we're talking about. All right, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to multiply by uh, the entire expression by a, a version of 1 uh, that is going to make that 4 into a 1. 4 plus 5 times cosine of theta with 12 on the numerator. So how do you make 4 into 1 with multiplication? You multiply by 1 fourth, 1 fourth. All right, doing that math, we get 3 on the top. And then 1 plus 5 times 1 fourth is 5 fourths cosine of theta. From here, we can identify e, the eccentricity, as 5 fourths, which is greater than 1, which tells us we have a hyperbola. The next task we want is we want to write our numerator as e d. Um, and so our numerator is 3. And so we want e times d equal to 3. So to do that, we're going to say, OK, well, what do we know so far? I know 3. Do I know the e or d? No, I do not know d, but I do know the eccentricity is 5 fourths. So replacing 
e with 5 fourths times d, we have a new algebra problem that we can solve. To isolate the d, get it by itself, we'll multiply by the reciprocal of our fraction and everything will reduce nicely. Golden rule of math, if you do it to one side, you better do it to the other. And so you get d is equal to uh, 3 times 4 is 12 fifths. So useful things we know so far. We know that centricity, we know that d value, which will help us identify our directrix. And so last but not least, I want to put this thing into the correct kind of format. So I'm going to put it into this format and identify everything we can from that. So r is equal to e times d. Well, I know e is 5 fourths times d is 12 fifths over 1 plus, what is it, 5 fourths? Yep, 5 fourths cosine of theta. And from there, we know, and we've already got it written that it's a hyperbola, but e is equal to 5 fourths. Being greater than 1 tells us it's a hyperbola. Uh, I'll finish that. And then the directrix, uh, d is equal to and d is equal to 12 fifths tells us that, well, looking back up here, we know that we have a vertical directrix. And so, well, I just, this, right? This tells us that our directrix is equal to x is equal to 12 fifths positive. All right, that is our second example. And uh, we didn't need our second blank slide, but the graph of it there is right there, 12 fifths is about, oh, I don't know, let's see, uh, I should, yeah, 12 fifths is about 2.4. And if you look at that, you should, it looks like it's 2.4. Sorry, the uh, computer just jumped on me. Come back a little screen, there we go. And yeah, you can kind of do the tick marks here, one, two, three, four, five. And sure enough, X is equal to positive 2.4-ish. Sorry, I do apologize, the computer is glitching. Hopefully it'll shape up here. All right, one last example, and that'll be it for this concept. So our example is r is equal to two minus two sine of theta. First things first, we take a look at the trig function. That tells us that we have, since it's sine, we have a horizontal directrix. And we know that our goal, okay, so we'll finish the thought process here. The negative tells us that horizontal lines are equal to y is equal to. And so since it's got a negative there, this negative tells us that it's gonna be y is equal to negative d uh, when we want to find the equation of the directrix. Our goal is again gonna be to put this thing into the format of y is equal to, I'm sorry, not y, but rather r, r is equal to ed times one plus e times uh, sine of theta. All right, so now we kind of have got everything we know without doing any algebra. Now we just have to do the algebra to put it into that format. Um, we want, first things first, focus on that lower left. We want that two to be transformed into a one. This needs to be a one because of that reason. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna multiply by a the fraction on the right by a version of one such that it turns that two into a one. How do you turn two into a one with multiplication? You multiply by one half. And since you can't just multiply the bottom of a fraction without addressing the top, you have one half over one half is really just multiplying the expression by one. So nothing changes. We just rewrite it into a different format. Okay, one half times seven is seven halves. And then one half times two is one minus one half times two is one uh, sine of theta. Uh, I wrote the one in there because it kind of helps me to see that that's the coefficient and that's going to be our, our um, eccentricity. So this tells me that E is equal to one, which implies we have a parabola. All right, what next? Well, the next thing we want is I want to be able to have a different highlighter color I haven't used yet. Uh, no, but I'll just reuse yellow because yellow here. Okay, so next I want, our next task is to make, uh, to write seven halves as E times D or use that to find the D quantity. So what do we know so far? We have seven halves equal E times D. Well, E is one times D, 
And so there's not much to solve. We just directly find out that D is equal to seven halves. All right. Uh, well, from up here, since I used yellow for this, we'll go back to this. And it was the yellow prior, so everything's kind of coming together nicely. Uh, we can now identify the equation of the directrix. Since it's a horizontal line, we have y is equal to, and since there's a negative before the trig function, we have negative d, and d is 7 halves. So our directrix is y is equal to negative 7 halves. And then putting it all together, putting it into the format, we have r is equal to um, e times d. And while e is 1, I'm just going to go ahead and write it in there because it doesn't hurt anything. 1 times d, 7 halves, over 1 minus 1 sine of theta. So we have a parabola with directrix equal to negative, y is equal to negative seven halves. Again, we squeezed that onto one slide, so we didn't need the second slide. But if we look at this, negative seven halves is, um, should be three and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it's negative three and a half. And if we look at the graph, um, it's going by twos. So we've got to kind of mark out one, two, three, four, negative. If the, and if this wasn't in a polar grid, but an XY grid, uh, you can see that that is in fact negative three and a half uh, for our directrix with our parabola plotted. All right, uh, that is it for this lecture.